in America's storied Southwest, at the meeting spot of the Mojave Desert, Colorado Plateau, and Great Basin, you will find St. George, Utah, an otherworldly setting that has long epitomized and embraced a spirit of intrepid daring. The echoes of its ancestral settlers, the native Puebloans, are still heard and felt among the red sandstone cliffs and wind-carved canyons. It is here, a place of raw, time-worn beauty, that the best triathletes in the world have converged to test the endurance, strength, and will of the human body, mind, and spirit. I always set big expectations for myself and big goals coming into a world championship. You know you're gonna finish with nothing left and you know you're in for a tough day. It's a nice course, but it's also a brutal course. It just kills your legs. There's always gonna be pressure. It's something I've had to work on personally. I was just really, really focused, and I said, if you can't race like that, then basically don't even bother showing up in St. George. I knew the pressure was on. I wanted to make it a hard race and uh, see how it ended. Since I've come into this sport, it's been a dream of mine to win a world title. This land shaped by the natural elements and rugged terrain that have tested and rewarded its inhabitants for generations is a fitting stage for the 2021 Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Professional athletes race alongside their amateur counterparts. For all, it is the achievement and opportunity of a lifetime. 70.3 miles of swim, bike, and run await. The land of endurance is calling. For the professionals, an Ironman 70.3 World Championship is always highly anticipated but perhaps never as much as this one, coming two years after Nice, France. At that most recent 70.3 World Championship in 2019, Switzerland's Daniela Reef dominated for her fifth title. Add in her four Ironman World Championships, and it is obvious why the other women consider her the one to beat. Great Britain's Lucy Charles Barkley has come about as close as you can to winning a world championship of her own. There have been four Ironman world championships where her result was second best. All but one of those titles went to Daniela Reef. Great Britain's Holly Lawrence, the 2016 Ironman 70.3 world champion, is the only one to beat Reef at this race since her dominant run began in 2014. Lawrence was also the runner-up to Reef in 2019. But this is far from a three-women race. The field is deep, with some new faces as well. People are criticizing my setup. It is a rookie that is garnering a lot of the attention. American Taylor Nib may have only one race under her belt at this distance, but her second place at Ironman 70.3 Boulder, not to mention her silver medal performance as part of Team USA's mixed relay in the triathlon at the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo, has served notice that she is one to watch. On the men's side, Defending champion Gustav Eden said it will come down to a two-man race between himself and fellow Norwegian Christian Blumenfeldt. Those comments did not sit well with the other pro men, especially for the host country athletes. American Ben Canute has multiple Ironman 70.3 wins in recent years and a second place finish at the 2017 Ironman 70.3 World Championship. Fellow American Sam Long has come into his own this year. With a course record at Ironman 70.3 Boulder, providing plenty of momentum coming into St. George. 
However, no one is riding as much momentum as Christian Blumenfeld following his Tokyo 2020 Olympic triathlon win. But perhaps there is nothing as reassuring as being the defending champion. Even if it was two years ago since Gustav Eden took his title. For the men, all the preparation, all the talk is coming to an end. Stay out there. Their 7 a.m. start. I'm nervous as beep. Is looming. For the pro men, the swim represents about 23 minutes of a three and a half hour race. The start, just a fraction of that. Yet its importance should not be underestimated. It can set the tone for the day ahead. The start of this race was really exceptional. It was so physical. It's as if we're professional football players having to go for the first down on fourth and a few inches. Every second matters, every body length matters, and I just really embrace that moment. American Ben Canute, as expected, is setting the pace. And his goal is simple. Expose the weaker swimmers and show that today will demand a well-rounded strength. I race to my strengths and everybody knows I like to swim fast and you can't ever win it in the swim, but you can make other people lose it. The professional women will be next to take to the start line. All eyes are on Daniela Reef. In the past, the first discipline is where others, particularly Lucy Charles Barkley, have gained an edge on the defending champion. But it seldom has proven to be a decisive factor. Yet the game remains the same for Lucy Charles Barkley. Build a lead in the swim after navigating the fray. On race morning, I felt actually surprisingly calm, knowing everything's set, everything's ready to go. Let's hear one more time for the best Lucy Charles Barkley immediately goes to the front. She will look to set a pace that no other woman can match. Ben Canute leads a breakaway group of six men that contain one of the Norwegians. Christian Blumenfeld is strong across all three disciplines. His countryman Gustav Eden is in the second swim pack, losing time, but very well positioned. The Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship, presented by Utah Sports Commission, is brought to you by Hoka, time to fly. Gatorade Endurance, formulated for farther. Breitling, celebrate your finish with the ultimate memento. While the 64 professionals are well underway, 3,500 age group athletes are about to start their journey of 70.3 miles. For them, today is not only a competition, but a celebration of what it took to earn their spot in this prestigious race. It is the culmination of months, sometimes years, of grueling training and pure determination. Just standing on this start line among the best amateur athletes in the world is a triumph. Earning a qualifying spot to the Ironman 70.3 World Championship has been a long time goal for 51 year old Kyle Brown of Kaysville, Utah. But today represents much more than a dream realized. For Kyle, it is a very personal statement about moving forward, even when faced with the most daunting of challenges. Today is just another example of him staying the course with courage and conviction.
In the summer of 2021, Kyle, a husband and father of five, was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It affects the nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord, resulting in loss of muscle control. Eventually, it becomes difficult to move, speak, eat, to breathe. When you swallow, it's almost involuntary. If you took in some water swimming, you would swallow it. And I don't, I choke, then I can't breathe. So that's always my concern in this one. I have muscle twitch fasciculation through my arms, chest, upper body, nonstop. And uh, mine is spreading to my hands now. We had a doctor that said, yeah, you sure as hell better not swim. I said, well, I am swimming. I mean, heck, I'm, I'm dying. So what's a world championship race? That's no problem. I've always been a person that has enjoyed what I've been given. And now that's even tenfold. You have a choice how you handle it. We came with the motto, and it's a line from a, <clears throat> from a song. Oh, when faced with tragedy, we come alive or come and done. So we said, we're going to come alive. We've chosen to focus on what we do have. It's hard. I always call Kyle Superman. It's really hard to imagine him not being as strong as he is. I come and done when no one's around. I don't want people to see that. It's my time to say goodbye, say hello, say I love you. That's my bucket list now. Leave a positive mark on this planet in some way. He wants to be that example that shows that even in the worst possible situation that you can still do incredible things. People give you all kinds of stuff when they're dying. <laughs> it's been awesome. <laughs> it's always been about, you know, being bigger than yourself. But yeah, he cares a lot about other people and wants to make an impact on, on other people's lives. He lifts people, he elevates people to, to do better and to think better and to believe more of themselves. He's always had that gift. I coach a high school mountain bike team, Davis High School. We have 160 kids on our mountain bike team. It has really helped these kids. They all know if Kyle can do what Kyle's doing, they can do it. But he's just like a really special person to me. Just seeing him come out here every practice, he's still keeping up with us. In my last race, all I could think about is how Kyle could push through what he's going through, and it helps push us. Kyle's just been an amazing coach to all of us, and we just want to support him and give him a lot of motivation. When I ride with them, I'm not sick for an hour or two or three. I'm 16. I'm invincible. Some of them are missing homecoming <laughs> to come down to the race because he means that much to them. Team You have to have something positive to focus on, something to get to, to try and fight for. And this is it. John Blaze uh, wore 179 in uh, 2005 Ironman Kona. He passed away. His parents still run the Blaze Man Foundation. I reached out to them and said, uh, what can I do for you? 
for him. And they emailed me and Iron Man and said, can, uh, can Kyle wear his number? Iron Man immediately said, yes. What a huge honor to wear that number. I'm carrying a lot of uh, his power and energy with that number. Can't fail with that number. It's time for Kyle Brown to take another step into the unknown. It's time to come alive. Well into the professional swim, Great Britain's Lucy Charles Barclay continues to build on her one minute advantage. Behind her, a chase group has formed. They too are putting time into the rest of the women's field. Now more than two minutes back, the defending champion Daniela Reef is no doubt looking to limit the damage. For the professional men, the 1.2 mile swim is drawing to a close with American Ben Canute still out front. Looking behind, coming out of the water, uh, I saw that I opened up a gap on the guys who were swimming on my feet almost immediately up the boat ramp, and that always fires me up a little bit. As Canute heads out of T1, right there with him is Olympic gold medalist Christian Blumenfeld of Norway. He has posted one of the fastest times ever across this distance. Then it is the two Danes, Daniel Beckergaard and Mickey Todd with American Eric Lagerstrom right there in fifth. The big question now is, what is their advantage over the defending champion Gustav Eden? The answer, one minute, 11 seconds. Closer than most had expected. Sam Long is out of the water. American Sam Long is two minutes, six seconds off the pace. And the crowd just exploded about me. And, and I didn't even have to hear the time spots. I could tell with how excited the crowd was that I had a good swim. Ben Canute continues to push the pace out front. But with a look over his shoulder, he knows there is some unwelcome company closing in. Bib number one, Gustav Eden, is on the move. Even though it's a big group dynamic in the front there, it's uh, always Christian I'm looking at. He is on fire at the moment. Sam Long is fueled by the pre-race hype surrounding the Norwegians. Even in all the press conferences, it was all Norway, 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 Norway. It actually made me a bit angry and it, it really lit a fire underneath me to prove that America's got some top athletes. 56 miles on one of the most beautiful but unforgiving Ironman 70.3 bike courses awaits. Who will rise to the challenge? Back in the women's race, it is no surprise to see Lucy Charles Barclay dominate in the water, but it is no less impressive. I was just kind of all focusing on get to my bike, do my transition smoothly, and then just get the hell out of there. I definitely feel like if I'm out of the way and they don't know where I am, then I've got an advantage. Lucy Charles Barkley is gone as the chase pack makes its way into transition a minute 30 back. Brazil's Pamela Oliveira, former Ironman 70.3 world champion Holly Lawrence from Great Britain, American Taylor Nib, Julia Molo from France, and South African Jeannie Metzler make up a formidable chase pack. As the pursuit of Lucy Charles Barkley has moved onto the bike course. Switzerland's Daniela Reef, now two minutes, 30 seconds back, knows it is her time to shine in the discipline where she has established herself as the dominant one. Australian Ellie Salthouse is also right there, along with a pair of top British triathletes, Emma Pallant Brown and Katrina Matthews. At the front, Lucy Charles Barkley knows that she needs to change the script. Leading the swim and bike has yet to be a winning formula as she continues to chase her first Ironman 70.3 World Championship title. 
she knows that Daniela Reef, the most decorated Ironman athlete ever, will be tough to derail. Rugged St. George, Utah is a fitting battleground for the world's best triathletes. Here we go. The age group athletes are making their way to the finish of the 1.2 mile swim and out on the 56 mile bike course. Racer 179, Kyle Brown, has conquered the swim. It has not been easy. But now, back on dry land, he is about to start his favorite part of race day, the ride. Also finishing the swim is 32-year-old Lauren Parker of Australia. Lauren, a former pro triathlete, was out for a training ride in 2017 when she crashed her bike and sustained a spinal cord injury that left her paralyzed from the waist down. She's come to the World Championship to show just how far an unwavering self-belief can take you. But she's not alone in her endeavor. Here in support of Lauren is her best friend, Brad, as well as two volunteer nurses, Marcy and Sydney, who are tending to third degree burns Lauren sustained to her feet just days earlier. Without their selfless support, Lauren would not be able to chase her dreams today. All I heard was a sound that I'll never, ever forget for the rest of my life. And it was the worst sound I've ever heard. She said, Brad, can you tell me I'm gonna be all right? Lauren Parker's life changed that day. I grew up as a, an elite swimmer. And I got my first state medal at the age of seven. I really wanted to make the Olympic Games one day. I did my first triathlon at the age of 18. At that event I got seen by a national coach and he saw potential in me. And I've seen a lot of athletes going around in my lifetime and none better than Lauren. It gave me a lot of happiness to see somebody with that much commitment living a dream I did my first Ironman in 2014 at Ironman Australia and I got my ticket to my first Kona Ironman World Championship. In 2015, I got a second place podium. April 18, 2017, I was on one of my last training rides before tapering down to Ironman Australia and I had two minutes to go of my last hard effort and both my tyres burst and I went flying into a guardrail. I was 28 years old, had my whole life ahead of me and then I felt like it was ripped out of my hands. I sustained many injuries and all that can be repairable, but there's one thing that couldn't be and that was my spinal cord, which left me instantly paralysed from the waist down. All my nerves were damaged in my accident and from my chest to my feet, throughout my whole body, um, I have this pain that's uh, just torturous. I found out uh, when I was in rehab by a good friend of mine and a legend, Bob Babbitt. He invited me to San Diego to be part of the Challenged Athletes Foundation Triathlon Weekend. That's where it all changed for me. I watched these challenged athletes participate and you know, I thought that if they can do it, then I can do it. When people are athletes, they need sport to stay in life. And to do that, I want you to meet Carlos Moleda, five-time Ironman world champion. I want you to meet David Bailey, 
former motocross champion who became an Ironman world champion after he was paralyzed. The key was her understanding that her life was not over. Uh, her life was different, but it could be different in a positive way. People come up to Lois and they want to feel sorry for her. We don't need them to feel sorry for her. She hasn't got a disability. It's the ability she's got. Having a Paralympic Games silver medal, I couldn't be more proud of the journey it's taken to get there. What it comes down to is that I'm just being myself. There's so many things I can't do, but I choose to focus on what I can do and the positives rather than the negatives. So that's how I get through each day and I choose to never give up. Today, like every other day of her life, Lauren Parker finds a way to fight on. There is a huge group now at the front of the men's race with German Frederick Funk pushing the pace. The two Norwegians, Gustav Eden, the defending champion, and Christian Blumenfeld, the Olympic gold medalist, are both right there. They know the rest of the men's field is anticipating their next move. Things are expected to heat up when the athletes reach Snow Canyon and the biggest climb of the day. The women's race is a complete contrast to the men's. Lucy Charles Barkley remains all alone at the front of the race. Taylor Nibb is two minutes, 30 seconds back. This is only her second Ironman 70.3 race, but you would never know it. The defending champion, Daniela Reef, has moved into third place with a large chase pack trying to hold on to her pace. In classic form, Daniela Reef is right where she needs to be. Every racer in today's field has their own reason and motivation for tackling this challenging world championship course. Sam Holness has traveled all the way from his native London, England in pursuit of his own goal. Like Kyle Brown and Lauren Parker, he's driven by more than a finish line. 28-year-old Sam wants to show what athletes like him, people with autism, a neurodevelopmental disorder, can achieve. I want people to know that I am autistic. I want people to know that autism is my superpower and autism keeps me hyper-focused. I want people to understand that having autism should not stop you from doing sport. So Sam, one, two, three, I think four, probably five. Last one, turn. Yeah. And there's another one, far one on that side. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. And then back in. Yeah. Far A. Yeah. That's the course. I always talk about Sam is an athlete that has autism as opposed to an autistic triathlete and I'm not demeaning either side of it, but this guy works hard. He was always a really alert kind of child and very much involved in things and we knew that he couldn't 
certain things that he wasn't doing in terms of milestones, but there were other things he was excelling at. He taught himself to touch type 40 words a minute by the time he was about six or seven because he got a little typing program and he just worked on it. We wanted him to be confident. We wanted him to have competencies. We wanted him to be able to say, I can do that. And no one can take that away from you. Sam has always shown us that with belief, with commitment, with support, with making adjustments and working with him where he is, he meets gold. The thing we learned about autism over the years is that those who are on the spectrum, they're highly sensory. So noise, touching, the things they touch, how they feel, that you're going into water. People. So there's crowds, there's noise, people are close together. He has to face all of those challenges, everything. He just gets tunnel vision. You know, athletes talk about this, so he's just thinking, I'm going to swim now. So the people around him, the noise, the contact, the wetsuits, all of that disappears because doing the race is more important than all of the other things. He can overcome some of those challenges because he has something that he wants to do more than the impact of the challenges. So any adjustments that are made that support and help him to cope, often will help and support other people to cope. I'm in awe of this guy and what he does. It changes your view of the world and what people can do. I think the best thing is, it's talks about love. With every pedal stroke, Sam Holness is writing his own story. A new superhero has arrived. It is as beautiful as it is formidable. Snow Canyon. Two billion years in the making, it is the iconic and potentially defining section of this 56-mile bike course. And it is here at mile 42 that Gustav Eden has chosen to move into the lead. Magnus Ditlev tried to go with him. Like everyone else, he too is beginning to lose touch. The longtime leader on the bike, Frederick Funk, is now in third. When that move happens, you have to make that decision of if I go right now and try and bury myself to stay with Gustav, am I gonna pop on Snow Canyon? Am I gonna ruin the rest of my race? Part way up the climb, Sam Appleton starts slowing down and I go by him and he's got a nosebleed, blood gushing out his nose and I'm thinking like, this might just be a survival fest here. Christian went around to the front of our chase pack shortly after Eden had launched that attack. All of a sudden he just sits up and he's going backwards looking down at his bike and I knew he had some kind of mechanical and uh, it was kind of carnage out there. For Eden, his biggest focus remains on his countryman, Christian Blumenfeld. And right now, his closest rival is experiencing every triathlete's nightmare. All the while, Gustav Eden continues with his relentless attack up Snow Canyon. It has been a dream season for Blumenfeld up until this very moment. For someone who has seemed simply invincible, This mechanical issue is unexpected and devastating. Uh, it's over. I'm sorry, dude. I'm really sorry. In the professional women's race, Daniela Reef is putting down one of those rides we've come to expect from the Swiss star. She is in third position. With only American Taylor Nib and the leader Great Britain's Lucy Charles Barclay left to catch. She's managed to catch me on the bike in every race that we've done nearly, so there's no discounting her. So I was like, she's pretty close, it's not a massive gap, and I know the talent that she has. So again, it was like, right, I need to keep driving the pace. I was riding and I'd probably have one to two motorcycles next to me. And then all of a sudden, it was like three. And I'm like, oh, I think Danielle's caught me. And sure enough, I look around, there's pink there. 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh wow, she's here. For now, Reef remains third. Still in the hunt for a podium spot, American Sky Munch is in fourth, and behind her are Emma Pallant Brown, Holly Lawrence, and Aussie Ellie Salthouse in seventh. South African Jeannie Metzler is also in the mix. All strong podium contenders. But despite the strongest efforts of her chasers, Lucy Charles Barclay has stretched her advantage to three and a half minutes with no sign of letting off the gas. The age group athletes are now making their way to the epic Snow Canyon climb. Kyle Brown is cruising through the miles. This is where he is most at home on his tri bike. Still, his advancing ALS makes cycling more challenging. It is mind over muscle now. Lauren Parker also pushes on. It will take everything she has to surmount the unrelenting climbs. Sam Holness is showing the focus and fortitude that has earned him the nickname Super Sam. He is on a mission to change perceptions about people with autism. There's been no response to Gustav Eden's attack back at Snow Canyon. He is clear of all the other professional men as he heads out on the half marathon run. Magnus Detlef enters transition 45 seconds back. Many have considered the Dane a podium threat, and he is certainly in a position to make that happen. One of the fastest runners in the field, Gustav Eden is now clearly the one to beat. But anything can happen on this notoriously tough 13.1 mile course that opens with a soul-crushing climb that will expose any weakness. You just feel like you're running in syrup, like you have these nightmares running and you're not going anywhere. The chase pack is coming for the leader. It is a huge group that includes some very good runners. Ben Knute, the early driver of this race, Daniel Beckegaard, Jackson Laundry, Sam Appleton, and Eric Lagerstrom are there. And just behind them, American Sam Long is starting his charge. I got really worried because everybody else took off ridiculously fast. The first mile to run, I got dropped by the entire group I was with. I stuck with it and my coach yelled at me, don't lose contact with this group, stay with them. And I looked at him and I said, don't worry, everyone else is running too hard. I've got this. Christian Blumenfeld has made it back to transition. Although he has lost too much time to be a podium threat, he has chosen to finish what he started, a show of respect to this event and his fellow competitors. Lucy Charles Barclay has led off in the bike in several Ironman World Championship races, but never by this big a margin. This is either a breakthrough day or dangerous new territory. American Taylor Nib is about five minutes down on the leader, but she is likely more concerned with what is going on behind her. The run is already promising a heated battle for the podium. Now more than six minutes back in third, Daniela Reef is in danger of interrupting her winning streak of three straight years at this event. It would be a massive upset. But this course and these contenders don't care about track records. All that matters is happening right here, right now. 
and right now Katrina Matthews is running in fourth position, followed by Sky Munch and two of the fastest runners in the field, Jeannie Metzler and Emma Pallant Brown. I came out of transition and that's when kind of this crazy storm hit St. George. It was very weird, like lightning and thunder came and then rain and this kind of sideways wind. And I was running through and this lightning bolt just like shot through and I was like, this race cannot be cancelled right now because I am like in the lead by a good amount of time. So let's just keep going, like this has to keep going. Back in St. George, the storm has passed for now. The age group athletes are at the point in the race where they have to dig a little deeper. The body wants to stop. The mind must find a way to keep moving forward. For ALS warrior Kyle Brown, anticipation of the finish line in perhaps his final race is bittersweet to say the least. He's going to soak up every single step of this 13.1 mile run. The unforgiving course is testing Lauren Parker to her limits. But if we know anything of Lauren, it is her fierce determination to push through any adversity. Super Sam Holness is also laser focused on today's finish line. With every mile, he is paving a new path for other athletes with autism. Resilience and fight, two hallmarks of today's world championship field. And right now, these weary athletes will need to summon both. Well into the second run lap for the professional men. And the defending champion Gustav Eden looks to have a lock on first place. The real race has come down to a battle for second and third. It appears the final two podium spots will be decided between American Sam Long and Denmark's Daniel Beckegaard. It's definitely the hardest run course out there, also the most honest. He's such a great athlete. I just had to play my strategy right, and I thought, oh, I got him, and, and put about 20 seconds into him in a mile there. But then he started crawling the time back. There he is, everyone! Your 2021 Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Champion, Gustav Ida! To actually reach the finish line and you knew that you have remained world champion, it's, um, it's an amazing feeling. With the fastest ride of the day, followed by a race best run split for a total time of three hours, 37 minutes and 13 seconds, Gustav Eden was simply untouchable. What a tremendous run! Let's welcome Sam Long! And finishing in second place about four minutes behind him, an elated American Sam Long knows the magnitude of today's performance. From Denmark, third place! Tremendous day! Daniel Beckegaard hangs on for the final podium spot. And just 44 seconds behind Beckegaard, countryman Mickey Tagholz has run his way from 10th off the bike to fourth place. Canadian Jackson Laundry has had a breakthrough race of his own after fighting his way into fifth. There they are, everybody! The best in the world! A pro men's podium occupied by three 25-year-olds at the Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship proves that the future of Ironman 70.3 racing is bright indeed.
there will be a new world champion in the pro women's race. Daniela Reef, the five-time winner of this event, has fallen out of contention. Lucy Charles Barclay is running away with this championship title. She has increased her lead to more than seven minutes. However, there is a battle for second place. Jeannie Metzler has erased her two-minute deficit to Taylor Nib from the start of the run. But now, Nib won't let her friend and training partner get away without a fight. She is now matching Metzler's pace just a few seconds back. Once I passed her, I knew that I couldn't let up. I had to really dig deep, and um, that was probably the most painful part of the run. I respect Jeannie so much. I owe her to give my best effort. Like, I owe that to her, to like give a proper battle, and then you can say the best person wins on the day. Taylor, she's not gonna give you an inch, and she's not gonna give up. It's going to be a fight to the finish. After placing second at four world championships, Charles Barkley now has an Ironman 70.3 world title of her own. Since I've come into this sport, it's been a dream of mine to win a world title, and I feel like I've come within like touching distance so many times, so to finally do it was just unbelievable. South African Jeannie Metzler has also fulfilled a long-time dream of finishing on the podium at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship. USA, third place. And just 11 seconds behind Metzler, wow. Taylor Nib proves she's a new force on the 70.3 scene. Across the line in fourth, Katrina Matthews shows she's a fierce competitor on the rise. And countrywoman Emma Pallant Brown becomes one of three Brits to crack the top five. It is a truly global podium at the Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship with Lucy Charles Barkley on the top step, Jeannie Metzler in second, and Taylor Nib placing third. The Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship, presented by Utah Sports Commission, is brought to you by Hyperice. Do what you love more. Morton, used by athletes to train, progress, and repeat. Athletic Brewing, fit for all times. Wahoo, ride the revolution. Now the spotlight belongs to the age group finishers. After conquering 70.3 miles and facing off with a world-class field, Mother Nature and a formidable course, it is time to celebrate. With his finish, Sam Holness also sends a message to the world. Don't count out an athlete with autism. He will be the judge of what is possible. There to greet Lauren Parker at the finish line, the supporters who understand what it's taken for Lauren to get this far an unending supply of self-belief, tenacity, and hope, all celebrated now. And for Kyle Brown, this moment could not last long enough. After a roll across the finish line, a tradition that honors his inspiration, John Blaze, Kyle soaks it all in with his family. 
He's also got a message for everyone watching on. It has been a day showcasing the possibilities of human potential. Here in the land of endurance, these athletes have risen to the challenge, proving time and again that the will to overcome knows no bounds.